Pierre Robin's sequence is a condition present at birth in which the infant has a facial abnormality that causes difficulty in breathing. Dr. Jason Toronto from explains this condition and the subsequent problems related to it. The condition that we're going to talk about today is called Pierre Robin sequence. And that's a fancy way of saying that there are three things that happen at the same time. One is that a baby's born with a cleft palate. Another is that they have a small jaw. And finally, they have a tongue that actually falls into the back of their throat. And that's really the biggest problem because it blocks the baby's ability to breathe. This is a condition that is decently rare. However, it happens somewhere between one in every 2,000 to one in every 30,000 births. When it does happen, however, it's very problematic. Because the baby can't breathe, this is an acute emergency from the moment the baby is born. And these babies are, in, are immediately taken to the intensive care unit, the neonatal intensive care unit. In order to do this surgery, it takes an entire team of people together. So it takes the ICU team, it takes the anesthesia team. In my situation, it takes somebody who's trained in plastic surgery and craniofacial surgery, who's trained over many years to be able to accomplish the surgery. It's a very uh, high level surgery, but what's so great about it is that it's life-saving. The operation takes the better part of three to four hours because of all the safety things that have to be done to make sure that everything happens in the operating room in the safest manner possible. We do the same surgery on both sides and we actually cut the jawbone. And when we cut it, we put this device on. And this device, there's a fancy name for it, it's called a distractor. But essentially what it is, is it's a screw. And you put this on, and as you twist it, the two plates that you can see here actually move apart. And as they move apart, it creates a gap in the bone. Because babies are so amazing, they actually fill in that gap in the bone, and they will make their own bone in there. So we can wait, their airway gets opened up after turning this enough, it, the jaw actually moves and the tongue's attached to the jaw. So as you move the jaw, it pulls the tongue out of the airway and lo and behold, they can breathe and they can go home. This is the distractor that I was explaining to you. And as I spin it, you can see that what, what happens is the two plates or these two sides actually separate from each other. And so the gap that I was talking about that's created in the bone, you can see it happening here between these two plates. The baby will be in the ICU for a period of time and then once the airway is open because the device has done its job, then they'll go home. And then of course they follow up with me again so that I can take the distractor off. And then it, the other part of it is, as I said, a lot of these babies are born with a cleft palate. And I also do the cleft surgery. That's also part of my practice. So they come back and see me later and I get to take care of their cleft palate as well. So they really are patients that I know throughout their childhood, not just this is the first time that I get to meet them, but we really become uh, friends over their entire childhood. The babies have very good outcomes. The technology to be able to do this hasn't always been here. This has been evolving over time, and I'm very fortunate to be sitting here now at a time when the technology has developed to where it's small enough that we can actually do this procedure and do it on a, on a newborn level. People ask me all the time, how can you work at a children's hospital? Isn't it sad? And the truth is, if you walk through the halls of chalk, what you see are kids smiling, they're happy, they have turtle talk, they have child life, they have all sorts of resources. It's just a wonderful place to work. On the surgeon side, the hospital has provided me all of the resources that I need, which includes not just the physical resources, the actual screws and plates and things that I need to do my work, but also the other people to collaborate with, that I've been able to build these teams with them so that we can take care of children like this. We also now have a jaw, a jaw clinic, a jaw team that I've been putting together to take care of these children and other children who have jaw abnormalities throughout their childhood.